Okay, hi everybody. We we're promised back. that we, we were going to drop a special episode. Here it is. And here it is with only days to go before Christmas. We had to get it in before the big day. We are um, introducing right now a rewind episode. These are the days when we used to have Mike, our old wayward. Yeah, I was going to say, you, you may not recognize the third voice, but uh, Mike's out there. This is all the way back to episode 37, Woo! which was originally dropped mid-December 2018, the first year that we were in business here at TMI. I haven't listened to this in a while. Does it sound like we know what we're doing? We, that doesn't uh, sound like we know what we're doing now. Sorry. No, it doesn't. Uh, it, it uh, there's no difference. So this is the first time we attempted a Christmas show, a Christmas special. Yeah, we, we loaded talking, this. We loaded it. So And it's yeah. it's in and out. It's only like 35 minutes. Is it really? Uh, yeah, yeah. Wow. So now so we we're go talking, two hours. I know. On one of these, we could go two hours on one of these shows. And we'll probably have to revisit. Um, we are going to have to. But we we filled this up. We talked about the holiday special, the Star Wars holiday special. Uh, we talked about the Grinch. We talked about Charlie Brown. I think we threw an Emmett Otter in there. Um, yes, we did. Yeah, Frosty. I think we talked about Frosty. Yeah, too there's on gonna this be one. Frosty Christmas. Uh, Santa Claus is coming to town. Yeah, yeah. I'm throw some Rankin Bass in there. But there you go. So we wanted to give you something for Christmas. Wow, that's short. We must have just mentioned them. I know. Like, 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 I think we just did the episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rudolph, yeah. We had to hit Rudolph. Uh, we had to. Yeah. So now I'm going to have to listen to this along with you out there yeah. Um, yeah. to see what we even talked about. So, so yeah. there you go. Take a listen. It's in the mood. Even though we said this last week, again, I can't stress this enough. Hope everybody out there has a very, very happy and healthy holiday season. Yeah. Peace, love and everything else. Yes. All right. Thanks. Enjoy. The moment. Our fellow geeks, dweebs, nerds, and other unfortunates have been fervently waiting for has finally arrived. It's time for TMI Confessionals of the Nerd Confessionals of the Nerd Confessionals of the Nerd Confessionals. And now, your hosts, Jeff. Nerf Herder Chandler, Jim Kaiju Baker, and Mike Mjolnir Evans. And now, let's get on with the show. Here is TMI. Feliz Navidad! Oh, 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 happy Christmas. Yes, festivities. How oh, happy Festivus to the rest of us. To the rest of us. We've made it to the end of the year, gentlemen. We still exist. We have. That is, that is uh, epic. This what is number epic. episode is this? It's 37, <laughs> I think. I think we're at 37. 37 this one. Oh, I feel like we were hitting 50, I guess. So we got more to go. What do we, we do with the episode. podcast name since it's 2018 and we'll be going into 2019? We're going to look archaic. We are, but I'm too technologically ignorant to change. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a nail change in everything. Our Facebook Yeah, that page. would be, that would be. Uh, we committed. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a legacy thing now. It shows how little faith Dave had in it when he <laughs> all this stuff up. This thing ain't lasting more than four I'll episodes. Dave, hope you're having a nice Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> So the holidays, huh, boys? Yeah, Got yeah. some eggnog. This yeah. is our this is our third big cookies. recognition of the holidays. We did we did a whole month of scary stuff in October. We did Thanksgiving, true. and now we're at Christmas. Yeah, I can't wait till Groundhog Day. I know Arbor because Day. We're watching Groundhog Day. <laughs> it's Groundhog Day. Let's watch the Lorax for Arbor Day. Oh, Ooh. I like that. Oh man, we could just and of course July Fourth, Independence, Independence Day. Day. Independence Day. Or the Patriot, we could we could double up on the Patriot or board on the Fourth of July. Yeah, no, nah, nah, nah. There's better. There's better Tom Cruise movies to watch. Or how about Easter? We could do Ten Commandments. <laughs> Ooh, we could. Or here Man, comes no Peter Cottontail. Easter, there's no other Easter movie. <laughs> no, the the uh, Rankin Bass. Here comes Peter Cottontail. Uh, the Passion of the Christ. Is that it? The Christ. That's another Passion of the Christ. Christ. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Know. That's an Easter movie. We could do season one of Davy and Goliath. Hey, Davy. <laughs> why are we made of clay? <laughs> 
So we digress, as always. This is our Christmas well, this episode. Is gonna, this, this whole episode is going to yeah. be nothing but one discourse. One digression, yeah. A digression. Going right down that rabbit hole. We could actually probably pick a whole lot more, but we've narrowed this down to our top three Christmas. It is, and, and even then, that's top three is hard to yeah. kind of... Oh, believe me, we're going to be probably mentioning a lot more specials than just what's in our top three. But oh, absolutely. The hashtag the consciousness type discussion here. What? Are you implying that we don't have this written right down to the... No, none of us yeah. knows what each other's top three is going to be. So this that's is true. all going to be, you know, we could all have the same stuff. And then we, would... I, there's at least, I'm going to have to say, there's at least two... That are going to be identical. Yeah, I think you're Mike right. Mike and I both pulled out the exact same inspirational speech last episode, though. So. Now, I was trying to really go against the grain and pick out something that was maybe not an obvious choice, but I couldn't. The What I think that you guys have in your top three has got to mirror what I have, because you really have to go with your heart on something like this. Oh, you think so, do you? <laughs> Let's see. Maybe <laughs> it did, uh, I, there is one I have, but it does not make my top three. Yeah, there's there's a bunch that I've written down that didn't make my top three. Yeah, so we can, let's, we can let's begin. Those. Should we do this? Uh, three, two, one. Why don't, you know what? Why don't you take it? Uh, are we going three and you want to start, Jim? All right, I'll go three. Okay. Now, this was number th- number one and number two was easy for me, but number three, I really had to fuss over. There was much grinding of teeth and wailing here with numbers. Is that what that noise was? I was throwing Rudolph up there. Rudolph is now banned. You can't, we can't talk about him. That's ridiculous in itself. <laughs> um, the Year Without a Santa Claus was in there. But, you know, as I watched again The Year Without a Santa Claus in the past two days, just to really refresh myself and to really cement my top three, just to make sure that I knew what I was talking about. Doing your homework. I didn't really, The Year Without a Santa Claus is the heat miser and the cold miser. Oh, that makes the whole thing. It. Yeah, that's it. That makes the whole thing. You would watch that show just for just that Just for scene. that scene, yep. And the rest of it is disposable. And that 10 minutes, if that was a show by itself, if they built the show around those two, that might have gone into my top three. But as it is, I can't put it there. Uh, I can't lie and say that that show in its entirety would make my top three because – Otherwise, you've got a lot of boring songs with Mrs. Santa. They really padded out the hour that they had there. With, uh, <laughs> so having said that, my number three is the animated version of Frosty the Snowman. Ooh. As narrated by Jimmy Durante. Yep. Frosty the Snowman was a happy soul. And then they did a little, he had, he had a little cartoon cameo, and he was in there. I wonder if uh, Kevin Cronin from REO Speedwagon is in any way. Like- <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, whenever I see him, I want to say, cha 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 But yeah, Frosty is a Rankin Bass production. Yep. But it, it still very much has that Rankin Bass look to it. It's, it is a classic. Yeah, and it's animated in such a way that it's 1969 is when it came out. And you could tell that the animation then is not the scrimped over animation of the seventies and eighties. It's, you know, now we've gotten into computer graphics, so it's really, everything is state of the art comparatively. But uh, back then, just the popping of the colors, all the the sixties kind of wardrobe, even that the animated characters have that, that girl in Frosty the Snowman has a little mini skirt on throughout. Throughout the entire thing. Brings her up to the North Pole. And of course she's freezing to death. Yeah, she's freezing. Let's let's take her into the the greenhouse. Oh no, Frosty's melting. Then we've got the subplot of the magician trying to steal the hat. Make him make it. I forgot his name. It's a half an hour. It's it's no longer than it needs to be. And I think it's, it does its job in summoning that Christmas spirit. What say you gentlemen about Frosty the Snowman? That's a good call. Good Frosty call. Good it, call. It was actually my number three as well. Really? Oh, yes. Frosty the Snowman. Now, you know what's like funny it. is that this was a CBS production. It was al- always be on CBS. Still on CBS. And they would team it with the extremely boring Twas the right. Night Before Christmas. Oh, uh, with the mice. I hated that. Right, with the mice. That was just yeah, something to be uh, endured. Until yeah. Frosty came Yes, out. yes, you had to sit through it. You're like, all right, I'm committed. Because it wasn't like we had much choice. No, no. And usually they would pair it with that rather than Charlie Brown or Rudolph. Because Rudolph was an hour, so that would be on its own night. I don't really know what they would pair Charlie Brown with. Maybe it would be its own night. But, but yeah, Frosty is my number three. Nice. And Mike's too. Anything to add to that, Mike? Your Frosty experience? Uh, n- no, it's one of the ones that I still enjoy watching from time to time. 
It's it's just it has a happy, happy, happy ending. My number three is uh, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, not the Jim Carrey movie, but the original animated Boris Karloff cartoon. How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Reasons, memories. What do you got? Oh, I just it's just, well. Listen, just the song alone is uh, you know you the, can't get wrong with that. Yeah. You know, what but, is, what is that guy's name? Thor Raven. Croft, I oh, think. Oh, Frosty or uh, Tony the Tiger. Yes, that's Tony same the Tiger. Voice. And also, great. one of the many voices in the, the Haunted Mansion in Disney World. You know yes, who's, who, who who steals that cartoon for me is Max. Max, who then yeah. becomes the reindeer because he's the symp- sympathetic. Uh... So let me ask you this: uh, the little special is is awesome. I love it. Obviously, they turned it into a two-hour movie, and now there's an animated version with Cumberbatch. I don't know if I necessarily... It looks good. I think I got good reviews. I don't know if I necessarily need to. Yeah, my son saw it. I did not. And did he enjoy it? Well, I asked him if it was any good, and he said, meh. That was his... Meh? Meh. Meh. (laughs) He would fit right in well with this show. (laughs) Meh. So if you go with the the whole world of Dr. Seuss, and Horton hears a who, and the who's live on the little puff of dirt on the little dandelion... Yes. And there are who's in Whoville in the Grinch. So does the Grinch live on that little puff of dirt as well? Well, they do establish that in the Jim Carrey version. Anthony Hopkins is the narrator of the Jim Carrey version. And he says right in the beginning, on a snowflake lives this tiny little village. Of- oh, then maybe so, I just yeah. haven't paid much attention to that one. So it, they don't say it in the cartoon. I don't. No, they don't. They do. But no. when you start comparing notes, you're like... But yeah, whoever wrote the movie did, I think, obviously want to tie it in to the other, the other who's from the okay, other. That makes sense. Stories. You're a mean one, Mr. Mr. Grinch. Thurl Ravencroft. It's not Thor. Oh, Ravencroft. there you go, yeah. Ravencroft. This is the last name alone. I wouldn't touch you with a 39 and a half foot pole. But is it just me or whenever Boris Karloff speaks, it sounds like he's talking through a phone receiver. It might have been the way the. Any they other voice it. sounds crystal clear. It's like. He probably was very old at that point, so maybe he had to literally. Maybe phone he just in. he phoned it in. <laughs> old school Edison, uh, you know, little cup up to your exactly to your, yes. Into just hang on. Yep, amongst probably I can envision him sitting in his den with all of his Frankenstein ephemera around yeah. him. Now I have a confession to make. As a kid, I never liked The Grinch. Whoa. No. How dare you! The impudent! The audacity! The unmitigated goal! I did not like that Was he that too scary for you? I, I, I will not watch that, that show head. with you. I will not watch that show. I equated Ooh. it in my head with Twice the Night Before Christmas. Something to endure. You really? Did he scare you? No, no. I just thought it was kind of boring. Uh, <sighs> The Chuck Jones animation is great. Uh, oh, it has a lot of similarities to his Warner Brothers work with, you know, uh, Wiley Coyote and the Roadrunner and Bugs Bunny yep. and all that stuff. Um, Ricky Tikki Tavi, all those Ricky classics. Ricky Tikki Tavi, man. Oh, Ricky Tikki. That's a great one. Going off on a tangent here, also the cricket in Times Square, which oh Jones, yeah, he did a Christmas version called the Very Merry Cricket, which is also up there in my top ten, probably. Christmas Very Day. Merry Cricket, I can honestly say. Where I was I going? Ever. Oh, so, <laughs> where, where are you going with this? Getting show? back to the Grinch, there's a lot of animation that repeats during the whole um, sacking uh, of the yeah. village kind of stuff, yeah. where you see the same images over and over again with the the bundles of stuff coming out of the chimneys where the, while the Grinch is oh, and he kind of, right. As a kid, I always thought that was a cheat, like that they were just replaying the same. So the, the, the bother you like when the Flintstones were walking and it was just the same background going. Yes. Yeah, the, the, so like, wait a minute, we saw that tree. Oh, we saw that house. But today I have to say that the Grinch is one of my favorites, but not as a kid. So that's why not it's as a not kid. my top three. I always enjoyed it. I like him. So that was your number three. That was my number three. So I guess we're at my number two now. Yep. So I would go Emmett Otter. <laughs> Which I one? I can't believe Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas. This is my wife's favorite in the entire world. I was never privy to it. Really? Because I didn't have HBO. Oh, it was an HBO special. Yeah. And it wasn't until I met my wife and she introduced me to this Jim Henson Muppets. Yep. It is It is uh, a it staple is a of my family home. It is itself. I can't special. believe that I didn't make that high. I did, that didn't even cross my mind. That's a great yeah. one. Yeah. 
I've never what? seen what it. What about you? Re- I've never seen it. You've never seen it. No. Wow. wow. Yeah, it is. It is good. It is up there. Underprivileged kids. Hey, Ma. Their little Emma daughter. Because this oh. was a big deal. This was in 1977 on HBO. You know, obviously Christmas time, and they really built this thing up uh, because the Muppet Show was in its, I think, second season at the time. So well, maybe it's first season. But um, 77. So, you know, it wasn't just a Sesame Street thing anymore, Muppets. So anybody, any kid that was worth his salt that had HBO knew all about this Emmett Otter special that was coming up. And I remember watching it when it premiered on HBO when I was six or seven years old. And it was amazing. And my dad sat there and watched it with me. And I remember him commenting on how they could move the puppets while they were rowing a boat. So yeah, yeah, talking no. like the, and they were operating the mouth as if a hand was up there, like in the water, which I'm sure it was. They were probably just moving their arm along with the boat, but it yeah. was like such a technological feat at the time. It was very impressive. To, and well, that was a year awesome. before the Muppet movie came out. So, you know, go to the scene where Kermit's riding a bicycle. Yeah. Look, he's got feet. He's walking these ducks. Yeah. And so you, know, that's, funny yeah. you mentioned that is because there's a couple of different versions of this. One, the original had Kermit in the beginning of this special. I get, Really? And he introduces like, he a host? Yeah. He was like the host. He was the host. And the River Bottom Nightmare band runs him off the road because he's riding I remember butt. that. Wow. I think, I, I think maybe I did see this as a kid because I vaguely remember that. Yes. But he sets that up. He sets up who Emmett is. And then all of a sudden in their convertible comes the River Bottom Nightmare band and they leave him on the side of the road. And then the story is like hit and run. But mm-hmm. I think when they sold the rights to the show, when the show went off HBO had, and went on to syndication that whoever bought the show from HBO didn't have the rights to use the Kermit character. So that How opening crazy was cut that? out of it. I think in the DVDs that are out now, Kermit's back in. I'm pretty I sure. I was going to say, that sounds very familiar. So I'm wondering if either we have an old VHS tape. I don't even own it on DVD. It yeah, would have been VHS. I know my version on DVD has Kermit in it. Okay. All right. Uh, if you ever want to watch anything entertaining, you can, you're really entertaining. You can, uh, it's all over Facebook and I'll see if I can find it and share it or outtakes from the filming of Emma Otter. Really? So <laughs> just, just silly where like puppets are falling over or, or a prop doesn't work correctly. So, uh, yeah, it looks like it could be very tedious, uh, trying to film that stuff. Is, is this still shown on TV at any time? It's actually, matter of fact, I think that they're, they're doing, I think, I don't know if it was Fathom or Regal is doing a special screening in theaters. And it's only like a 40 minute little special. Is it an hour long? Yeah, no, it not, it's hour. probably 40 to 50 minutes tops. As if I think they made it so it would be an hour long special if shown on TV. With if you if you add commercials, yeah. right. But the soundtrack, all Paul Williams songs, and it's a great soundtrack. And only this year is the first time that it's been released on disc. Or, oh, you know, really? Okay. Anyway, yeah. All you aficionados go out there and get the soundtrack. Now you and I'm trying to, I'm drawing a blank. There's a, there's a song with the uh, hole in the bottom of the bucket. Hole in the wash tub. Hole in the wash tub. Yeah, good stuff. And of course, the River Bottom Nightmare Band no, that's a, between yeah. Elton John and Alice Cooper. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> good stuff, man. Good call on that one. I like it. So basically what this is, anybody that hasn't seen it, um, Mike, I'm talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking specifically. I'm looking is, at you uh, right here, Mike. Emmett Otter lives, he's probably uh, a nine or 10 year old otter that lives with Mama Otter and their father has Mom. passed away and leaves them very poor. He was a snake oil salesman. The plot of the special is, is that Emmett and his mother independently enter a talent show to try to get the other a Christmas present. So Emmett and his little friends get together and form a jug band, and they're going to play a song for the talent show. And his mother is going to sing her own solo song as a part of the talent show. Also in the talent show is this rock band called the River Bottom Nightmare Band. They all have Gene Simmons boots, and they end up winning the talent show, but Emmett and his mom end up learning something along the way. And that's <laughs> he makes a hole in the wash tub in order right. to make yep. it. And now she can't, she can't end up base. get extra money because she washes clothes for a living or something. Yes. So that's a sacrifice for them. And she hawks his toolkit. Yes, pause. And that's what he uses to do kit. odd jobs. So, yeah, yeah. They, they both sacrifice something in order to get into the talent. And they screw themselves. Well, you know, the dad died because um, I think he got run off the road because he was trying to get to the otter side. sorry that's my number two now these are these are must watch these are like must watch you like christmas can't happen until you watch these right is this what we're establishing here yes i think so okay 
I'm just I'm just setting the Although it goes off for me without Jim's number two pick. <laughs> you have to watch it and then maybe it'll be your number one next year. Okay. I can actually go with a number one because you have my two and three, which is Bowie and Bing's Christmas special. Oh, this wow. is the little drummer boy peace oh, on earth boom, boom. 1977 special. Wow. And so this is sort of that intergenerational get together. It was yeah. filmed in England in 1977 uh bowie didn't want to do it but his mom liked bing crosby so he went ahead and did it <laughs> fine and mom i'll do it <laughs> they finally had released the single in 1982 so it took uh, them which, that long yeah yes wow because yeah. that that is such a, a classic iconic song now and jim this must be on your list well you see mike this is part of a, a bing crosby it was called the bing crosby merry old christmas the special and it was one of these variety specials that had a number of different guests and bowie was one of the guests yeah so he sang the little drummer boy with bing and then did heroes solo he did yeah. not sing heroes with bing unfortunately that would have been great it would have been great so i've never seen this special in its entirety of course i've seen the little drummer boy because you know everybody's seen that many many times and I would like to find it, actually, the, the entire spe- hour-long huh. special. I think Bowie is only in those two segments. I don't think yeah. it's in the entire thing. In the entire thing. But, yeah, that is a, a great little snippet. And I think it was filmed only less than a month before Bing died, if oh, I'm yes. wow. mistaken. Wow. It aired after he died. Yeah, and he was sort of trying to go mainstream, I think more mainstream at the time, which he eventually ended up doing. Bowie, hmm. that is. Bowie. Right, yes. Interesting. And have you ever seen the parody with Will Ferrell and John C. Riley playing Bowie and Bing? No. <laughs> Was it a Saturday Night Live? No, it's a Funny or Die clip. Oh, gotcha. Okay, there Will you Will Ferrell's go. website. This was probably from three years ago, um, but <laughs> no. it's really funny. I'll, maybe I'll share it on our Facebook page. Nice. Looking forward to it. So, yeah, that's I like I, I, I that, is a that choice. I like it. Uh, is it mine? Number it's two? Yours. All right, this is a, a goofy one, but uh, I do dig it out. I have a bootleg because it doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. Is the Star Wars Holiday Special oh. that premiered one time and one time only on CBS in November? Uh, to the point where I had to go to my grandmother's in order to watch this Jeff. because we didn't even have CBS. Is it your number one? Jeff. Is that your number one? Are you telling me that you cannot go a year without watching this? I, this, I, this my kids, my kids have been indoctrinated. We watch spirit? it. It is. Well, listen, it's it's non-denominational. Chewbacca needs to get home uh, in time for Life Day. Not it's, even the most stout-hearted oh, Star Wars fan can it is sit horrible. through. Be it is a guilty, Star guilty Carney. pleasure. Because it is so bad. Starship. Jefferson, yep. It oh. is. It is. Uh, for lack of a better term, it's it's a variety hour. You got art it's Carney. It's two hours. It's not even an hour. Oh, is it two, two hours? hours? Oh, time flies when you're watching. It. I guess so. <laughs> time Art, stops art Carney and B. Arthur both sing. Um, let's see. Yeah, you got uh, Jefferson Starship, and they're not Starship. I think they're airplane. Jefferson airplane. And then you get to you get introduced to Chewbacca's family. Lumpy's his little boy. And the greatest thing about this special I is I thought Lumpy was his father. Oh, now, Have you're, I now, you're, now you're really yeah because what's the little kid's name then i don't I think, know i think you're right i think it, mala is molly or mala is his wife and are, i think people are yelling at me right now because there are the, people that the watch inter it. interspecies sexual attraction between chewbacca's father and dion carroll <laughs> is a little bit disturbing oh yeah he's watching a video at one point yeah. which is just basically holographic porn <laughs> yeah that's pretty epic but the 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 boba fett cartoon because this came out two years before yes Empire strikes back i will so concede part. the one worthy aspect of this special and this me, makes you lament the fact that lucas never approved an animated star wars because it's nirvana who they did eventually use for droids in the Ewok cartoons, the Saturday morning cartoons, but it is, it's not the same. Yeah, you, you got your introduction to Boba Fett. And you have a very heavily made up Mark Hamill in what can only be described as effeminate makeup and Carrie Fisher, who also sings. And Harrison Ford is in it begrudgingly. Yeah. He does not look in, happy in the at all. Of the Millennium Falcon. Don't yeah, he does not look. And it's all used footage, any of the, you know, Vader, or any of the... Uh, Ship shots are all just rehashed from Star Wars, but that was our only that was our only Star Wars fix outside of the movie at the time. 
And yeah, I had to go to my grandmother's and uh, somewhere I think on my VHS are the TV commercials. Yes, on, on my copy as well. I, yeah. You know, there's one for a robot, which is his name is Tobor, which is even as a kid, you realize it's just a robot backwards. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, wait a minute, you put no thought into that. Um, That's one step above Lobot for Empire. There you go, <laughs> Lobot. <laughs> but I turned this thing on for my children and their friends and my niece and nephew. So, yeah, there you go. And Chewbacca does make it home in time, just in case you're worried. For Life Day, right? Life or Day. Light yes, day? and ma matter of fact, diehard Star Wars fans actually celebrate Life Day. There's a specific day, and that is the day that this that this premiered is considered life day. Did it premiere on Black Friday? Was that when this was out, the first uh, That actually sounds about right, that yeah. it was the day after. No, I do remember watching it when it was on, uh, yeah. that one broadcast. That was I it. I sat up with every other kid and watched it. And then I think Lucas went out of his way to try and burn every copy. You know, as a kid, you don't think this is terrible, you know, like you would as an adult. No, like I said, it was just, it was, it was the only other Star Wars. That right. and the making of Star Wars. When that came out and was on TV, then R2 and 3PO, uh, host that and you get the behind the scenes you know the making of or whatever i mean that was it that's all you had maybe a star log magazine every now and again but you yeah. don't really have anything yeah i mean we're dying for content right and it's like yeah. come on i'll take anything yeah yeah and i think lucas and then is just a very very poor decision to say yeah we're gonna we're gonna do this and then immediately regretted it yeah okay. it's too bad if they ever did release this on blu-ray or dvd and put some worthy special features on there of like, you know, how the hell they came to make this. Right. Movie. Yeah. You want to see the thought process. How did B. Arthur make the get cut? Yeah. <laughs> That would be enjoyable to watch. Yes. And that B. Arthur song where she's, she's the bartender in the, uh, in the cantina. And she, you know, it's like closing time. And she's just it's like, like a Casablanca kind of a thing. Oh, uh, the Art Carney where he's like Julia Child's alien, the multi-armed alien making holiday dishes. It's, it's crazy. No, it's Harvey Corman. I apologize. That's Harvey Corman. No, but Art Carney is. Art Carney is also well, in it. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's, he's like, like some hate man or whatever. Yeah. So there you go. That's my number two, and I'm sticking with it. All right. So uh, back to me now. Have we yeah, all gone? It is back Have to we you. all gone our number twos? Yeah. No, I <laughs> well, I gave, you, I gave you my number one already because my number twos were um, Grinch and Frosty, two and three. Oh, I didn't realize that you were Grinch. So you were right there with me in Grinch. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you already did your number one, Mike? Yeah, I had to do that. was my number one because I had no two or three. Oh, okay. <laughs> So my number one, there was no question in my mind. I couldn't argue this at all. Internally, Charlie Brown. There yeah, is okay. nothing Charlie better. Brown That's Christmas. the apex of Christmas for me. Yeah, it is it really? Is it, is it Linus's inspirational uh, speech? It could be. It could be. Yes. The soundtrack, I have the album, which is longer than the actual special. <laughs> it's double, yeah. So, and just the fact that it's the first Charlie Brown TV special, there's a naivete about it. The animation is very old school Charlie Brown and it doesn't really look like any Charlie Brown special that's come after it. Exactly. It's got the original voice cast. And oh, I, I, I meant to jot this, the kid's name down, the voice actor that did originally did Charlie Brown throughout the 60s. My favorite of all the Charlie Browns, I, I'd have to say. And yeah, it is. It's still, I think, of all these kids' specials, it's the most powerful message I think that we've got. It's the most touching, I think, as well. It is. It is. Come on, who, who could not shed a tear the first time they see this? I don't think I shed a tear. Um, don't recall. I don't remember shedding a tear. What, what, what's your thoughts on the Blue Sky Peanuts that came out last year or two years ago? I enjoyed it. I liked the fact that they kind of tried to incorporate the highlights of most of the specials in the yeah. movie while having its own plot at the same time. Yeah, I thought it was well done. I liked yeah, it a lot. So did I. I enjoyed it. So, and I thought the, the voice casting was pretty, uh, was pretty good, pretty solid. Yeah. We, didn't, we didn't resort to, uh, you know, stunt casting and... Uh, you know, bringing Justin Bieber as uh, Snoopy or something. I didn't find fault with the computer animation either. Oh, I I, 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 yeah, I thought that they did a, a fantastic job of kind of picking up on that Schultz look and feel. It was like a two-dimensional look, but with the... Uh, Three-dimensional yes. mm -hmm. shading. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah I like That's it. a good call. P Listen, you can't go wrong with the Peanuts, any one of them. And I just found it, I would like to see the original, original version that was brought to you by Coca-Cola, because I think at the beginning of the original special that was aired in the 60s, it had a banner in the opening credits with Coca-Cola on it. Oh, really? Sponsored okay. by. Sponsored by. Um, 
But I think and that, all the and all the kids are sitting around drinking uh, Coke. Lost nice. to the decades, I think that is yeah. that opening been. Very cool. So we have to skip Mike because he already went number one. You jumped ahead there, sir. I had to. There was no choice. No <laughs> choice in the matter. You gotta go. You gotta go. You gotta go. You gotta go. I, I had uh, to get it off my chest. <laughs> there you go. You had to get Bowie off your chest. What? Um, I'm gonna go back to uh, Rankin and Bass. Santa Claus is coming to town. A oh, nice one is my all-time favorite. You can't. Fred Astaire is your host. Uh, what is he? Special delivery SD. And he has that cool snow tread delivery truck. You got Topper, the Penguin. Mickey Rooney is Chris Kringle. And then you got the Burger Meister Meister Burger. Who was just, <laughs> just hated toys. For whatever reason, he hated toys. And the Winter Warlock was always scary until he melts. So there you go. Santa Claus is coming to town. Yeah. My favorite of that. My favorite aspect of this is Mrs. Claus. Hot. Well, yeah, but then, but then, you know, she lets him go, and she says, "All right, well, as long as you're getting fat, I'm going to get fat too." Doesn't like this it. sort of have "Chitty Chitty Bang Bang" undertones to it? You know, you know, it, it, you know the town uh, with no toys kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Which, which was first, this or "Chitty Chitty question. Bang Bang"? That is a great question. Uh, this was chitty, chitty, 1970. Bang, bang, I'm gonna, the um, I'm going to say "Chitty Chitty Bang Bang" was 67. "Chitty Chitty Bang Bang." I think was 67. So 67. "Chitty Chitty Bang Bang" came first. So they stole it. Good call, Mike. They yeah. stole it. I smell a lawsuit. So nobody mentioned <laughs> Rudolph. Uh, it's almost Rudolph. a given, Rudolph, but I can go without, like, I actually watched Santa Claus is Coming to Town on YouTube last night just because I wanted to. And it's nice. They cleaned it up. It looks good. And you just all the songs are awesome. There's a lot more songs in there than there are in Rudolph. I think but, if we had a top five, maybe Rudolph would find its way. I, I, yeah, I, I think it would have to. to. Yeah. So uh, the, the one thing with Santa Claus is coming to town is so he's he's an orphan baby. And so I'm just wondering uh, if we found out if there was a sequel, if we found out that he was really the illegitimate child of Apollo Creed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd watch that. Clause two. And you know what is interesting in these Rankin Bass? There's no real carry through with the Santa Claus character. He always looks different and he's always got a different origin of sorts you know it's but he's still played by mickey rooney still played by mickey rooney yeah, except for the first rudolph the bullying santa. oh yeah the, the bad santa the jerk santa, santa. But you know what i do love from rudolph that that santa the scene where uh, mrs claus in the beginning is continuously trying to get him to eat, eat. Papa, eat. eat. <laughs> <laughs> it's like my grandmother right she's italian you know, italian so, so do we want to name some honorable mentions? I was going to say what did not make your list. We haven't heard from Mike. So Mike, if we went five, <sighs> oh man, we're making him think. We're making him think. If we went five, I got nothing. Nada? Yeah. You know what? I mean, I like them, but there's, you know, I don't go out of my way to watch them. But if they happen to be on? But if they happen to be on, I will. What about Christmas movies? flipping channels and all of a sudden there's i think that that's a whole i think we got to keep that until but we, oh. we can, that's a whole other discussion we can that is a whole other discussion because you made me change my number two the minute you said that it was only specials oh, because yeah because i could go christmas movie sure yeah yeah well you i'll tell you right say, now. i'm gonna blurt mine out miracle go on 34th go. street oh oh you went classic i gotta watch it i have to see that and, and for me wonderful life it's a wonderful life for me my number two i uh, see i had elf Elf is like a it's it's a newer movie, but it's just it's I can't not watch it. You see, now you don't have to listen to next year's show. Exactly, it all the way <laughs> maybe it'll change. Maybe something <laughs> else will come. Up. But just because only because Elf does kind of pay homage to those Rankin Bass, because all the little characters that exist in the North Pole are all claymation. The Norwal. The Norwal, yeah. When he when he's leaving, he's like, "Bye, buddy. Hope you find your dad." Bye, Mister Norwal. Such a great exchange. <laughs> <laughs> No other, no other show has ever had a narwhal on it. But what's funny is, is that it kind of gives you the impression that there was a narwhal in the old show. But there wasn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was just off screen. He was just like, off oh, the narwhal. Wait a second, yeah. that wasn't in any show. <clears throat> and then the, the the snowman is is not Sam, but he was like a funky. I can't remember what his name was. Uh, what didn't make my list? The other one, which is a, a little obscure, but it's a it's a great. Whenever it's, a, I don't own it, and I don't really think that there's. Um, any TV station, it's like, we got to play this. But when I see it, I, I have to watch it, which is Santa Claus versus the Martians. I only know that from Mystery Science Theater. <laughs> 
I, I've actually seen it unimpeded with uh, little robots making jokes throughout it. Mm-hmm. It is something, it is a sight to behold. It's a fun movie. You should check it out. I'm yes. going to. Yes. Santa versus the Martians. I would like to give a couple of the ones that I had written down but didn't include in my top three. Mickey's Christmas Carol, which is the animated Disney animated. version of yeah. the Dickens story from 83. It was made as a short. I, I don't know what movie it played in front of, but it's well, had on, been really short. It's well, it's like 25 minutes, I believe. So it's not a truncated Mickey special, but it's a, it's a pretty, huh. it's a pretty okay. special. So you can find it on the Mickey's treasures volume that came out in the two thousands. Can so, I can I just fathom a guess that it's Scrooge McDuck who plays Scrooge? Oh yes, he's Scrooge. yeah. <laughs> that's typecasting right there. I don't like that at all. That's typecasting. Goofy is Marley's yeah, ghost. Marley, yeah, Marley. Tripping ghost. over the chains that uh, <laughs> and Pete is the ghost of Christmas Future. So, you know the big bully Pete, Pete yeah. that throws Scrooge down into the grave at the end. Nice, nice going there, Pete. So yeah, I like that one. The Jim Carrey version is not bad either though, of Christmas Carol. That's well, that's a, go Scrooge. You might as well just go Bill Murray Scrooge. Scrooge, yeah, that's a good one too. Sir, we can't we can't get these antlers to stay on the mice. Did you try Staples? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a great movie. Now, since you guys didn't have HBO, you might not know this one, but I've seen this many times as well. The Rich Little Christmas Carol. Nope. No. Nope. No. Where he's doing every '70s character under the sun as he. So it's a one-man show basically, and he's playing every character as a different character. movie star. So Edith Bunker is in there, Johnny Carson, John Wayne. You know the people that Rich Little would normally impersonate. Right back so, in the '70s. And Paul Lind as um. <laughs> as the Paul Lind, uh, there's a show, there's a channel. I think it's Me TV has actually been playing the Paul Lind uh, Variety Hour. Oh really? He had, he had Kiss on there the other day, and it was very, it was awesome. It was but it's funny cool. to hear him. Oh, Mr. Scrooge. <laughs> right. <laughs> Paul Lind. Oh, that's Bob man. Cratchit. That's who he. That's who Paul Lind is. So there you yeah, go. Those were my honor. Uh, any Christmas songs that you must hear? Uh, the Band Aid. Do they know it's Christmas? Oh, oh good okay. one. No, yeah, right. that's up there for me. Okay. How about all, you guys? All I need for Christmas is you. I don't know if that's the name of the song. The Mariah Carey? The Mariah Carey, yeah. Oh, see, I chose the chipmunks. All I want for Christmas is my two front teeth. <laughs> so there we go. Merry Christmas, gentlemen. Merry Christmas to you. Yes, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Feliz Navidad. Uh, what do you got? Uh, Happy Diwali. Ooh. Diwali. No, that's past. The robot? Oh, Diwali's past. Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa's in Hanukkah. Hanukkah. I'm in the middle of Hanukkah right now. And um, we already we did mention Festivus up at the top of the Festivus, hour. Festivus, there yeah, we go. Festivus. If we if we left out anybody, we apologize. And we hope you get everything that you want for Christmas. Yes, Under including your, your two front teeth. All right. So next week we're coming back like the plague. <laughs> we are coming back. <laughs> we just keep. And we are going to review Spider Man into the Spider Verse. So yeah, let's let's hope I can pull this off. It's going to be. I'm really excited week. about this. What I, we're going to review is a excited. classic. I have no idea. Maybe we can. I don't even. We skip a classic and we just talk Spider Man. <laughs> I may be hard pressed to watch. Maybe it can just be like an arachnophobic kind of a uh, uh, an hour. We could go arachnophobia. We could go Kingdom of the Spiders with Kingdom William of the Ratner. Spiders. <laughs> or we could go the old school. I don't know. You can't go back to the Spider Man TV show. Well, we oh, could. That, Jim and I did talk about that. We yeah, we did talk about the the original Spider-Man TV show. Are we talking about the '60s animated or the live action? No, the show? live action. Yeah, the live action. Yeah, the live action. Maybe we should do that. Maybe we should. Is that exist somewhere? I'm sure it does. We can track sure. it down. All right. Well, again, Feliz Navidad, everybody. Yes. Merry Christmas. Merry yep. Christmas. Oh, come on. All right. Oh, come on. Well, all the way. Hello, everybody. If you liked the podcast you just heard, then please follow TMI on all of our social media outlets. First and foremost, email us at tmipodcast2018 at gmail.com. That is tmipodcast2018 at gmail.com. And you can follow us on Twitter at TMI underscore podcast 2018. Step over, say hi, give us a compliment. We'd love to hear from you. Awesome. Uh, make sure you follow us on Instagram as well, which is also uh, TMI underscore podcast 2018. And of course, we are on Facebook, facebook.com 
slash TMI podcast 2018. And it should be noted, we also have a community page. So join the forum. And if you like to watch YouTube, you can see us at TMI podcast 2018, all one word. Look for the popcorn bucket. Popcorn bucket. Or you could just go to our website, which has every link there. TMI confessionals podcast.com. And we'll see you at the concession stand. We'll save some popcorn for you.